Hey Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome to Let's Play Age of Wonders Planetfall with the Star Kings DLC. Today I'm collaborating with Paradox Interactive to show you the newest expansion to Planetfall, Star Kings. Specifically I'm going to be focusing on the new Oathbound faction but I would like to show off a little bit of the Galactic Empire first. This video is sponsored by Paradox and you can check out the link in the description of the video if you want to go ahead and check out Planetfall Star Kings for yourself. Welcome to the Potatopian Imperium. This is my own personal empire that you can create. This is a sort of progression system linking all of your games together in a really interesting way. You have a Hall of Heroes where you can see all of the heroes you've created and you can even create more to use in your future games. Right now I've got Erlene Westcott who is an Oathbound Xenoplague hero. There's also some really interesting progression mechanics uh, that kind of tie into the Reliquary. So when you play a particular faction and complete certain objectives in a particular game, you'll unlock new benefits that you can plug into your reliquary. These all have unique effects and unlock different things for your requisition, which is kind of like a extra customization option you have when you're starting a game. In order to show all that off, I'll go ahead and conquer a new world. When you do that, you're given a couple of options of different planets to uh, sort of play a game on. We've got Duskor here, uh, Bro Ina, and Mumfas. All of these planets have unique and different traits and secondary objectives. If we take a moment to look at Mumfas, for example, it has the research hub trait, which makes research nodes really common, but makes production and energy nodes more rare. It also has the Doctrine Broadcast Network that gives every single player in the game plus five Doctrine slots. Doctrines are an interesting mechanic whereby you can sort of plug in different buffs that apply to your entire empire. Kind of a little bit like in Civ 6 when you plug in a Civic card, but they generally have a bigger impact on how you play. What's also cool is we have secondary objectives on this planet, for example, Knowledge is Power which gives us Imperial Renown and experience every time we build a research specialization. There's also Repurposed, which gives us extra renown and experience whenever we plug in a Doctrine. And you can see here, this is the experience multiplier for the planet. For each modifier, we get a uh, small boost to the experience, I think, when we finish it. Let's go ahead and select a commander for this world. I'm going to recruit a new hero. I definitely want them to be Oathbound, but I'm not sure what kind of tech I want to play with. Let's take uh, Madison Tati, who is an Oathbound Celestian. They come with the Celestian Close Combat Equipment, Skilled Diplomat, which makes us better at Diplomacy, the Data Repository, which starts us with two random technologies, and no Vice, so there's no downside to picking this hero. This is the Requisition screen that you'll get at the start of every Empire game. And it ties into the relics and unlocks and progression and all that stuff because during the mission I'll be able to do things that give me renown and that can allow me to have specific units, operations and mods from other factions. For example, I can pick from any of the basic uh, tier one units that most empires have access to and take that as a unit that I can unlock and even recruit using renown in my mission. I really, really like this because it's like another layer of customization when you're building your empire. Instead of just picking your faction and your secret tech, now you can kind of mix and match a little bit from other civilizations. It's a really, really cool feature and I really, really like the whole progression system. I've kind of been a little bit addicted to the game. I've, I've played, um, <laughs> I, I had meant to just play a test game and I ended up playing for like a stupid amount of hours. And then I was like, oh, well, I'm too deep into this game now to actually start the recording. So I'll just start a new game. I'm a really big fan of Laser Strike because it's a fantastic early mid game ability that allows you to just finish someone off who you really don't want to take another turn. So I'm going to bring that on my game. Other than that, though, I'll bring the Devar Prospector and the Flash Payload, which allow me to turn the Devar Prospector into a bit of a support unit that can apply blind to units. And that's it. Once you've selected all these things, you launch the game and you're pretty much playing the game as normal, but with a whole wide range of new options. Let's get started. Our starting location here seems pretty okay. We have this insectoid food center that could be really, really useful for growing a really big population. The thing I really like though is that we started off with the people's contracts uh, research, which gives us duty of care and pre-battle doctrines, which are both really, really powerful. I'm going to try to activate them as soon as possible. Pre-battle predictions gives all of my units one stack of precognition, which I believe uh, allows them to ignore one instance of damage. So that's super powerful. First things first, I'll set this little scout unit to auto explore because I find the auto explore in this game is actually really effective at picking up resources. My army, on the other hand, I'm going to send them over here to do battle over this little science station. My capital city, I'll pick up the central biofarm, which allows us to grow much faster. I don't have to work quite as many 
many food slots. Also tell my entire population to work on making energy for me because energy is what makes your empire run in this game. Anywho, let's begin the battle. Let's go ahead and try to fight these guys. And it actually looks like they want to retreat. This would give me some positive reputation. The question I have to ask though, how much do I value that positive reputation versus getting the experience from fighting them? You know what? I'm going to just take the free win. Picked up 43 signs, which is great. And that's it for the first turn. Technology wise, I'm going to start with induction rights because this gives me access to the Oath of Loyalty. Once you have the Oath of Loyalty, you can make a giant ball with your units and they'll all provide each other armor, which makes them really hard to kill. I just finished initiating my first doctrine and picked up 200 experience with the synthesis and 100 renown. I'm going to use that renown now to pick up the Devar Prospector and then I'll use the remaining 50 renown that I have to immediately recruit a Prospector. I really like the Prospector because it's a Devar Scout unit that can prospect for resources in unoccupied territories which can net you some really good early game bonuses. So that's why I brought this guy along. But that sort of like little strategy wiggle room that you have with the um, requisition mechanics and the new sort of renowned missions is really, really cool. I've been contacted by the spacers. I'm going to offer them my protection. They should offer me a quest now and they want me to do petting zoo. I'm going to kill four units and they'll give me some production science as well as some relationship and some diplomatic influence. Well, first things first, let's get rid of this purifier. My power is significantly higher than theirs, so I'm not too worried about an auto combat here. Looks like it was a pretty clean sweep for me. If there, if I had lost a unit, I would have fought the battle manually. I don't know, I'm kind of weird. I really like playing the battles that are really difficult. Um, easy battles where you can just auto resolve. I, I do that all the time in Total War. What I really like are the battles that are going to be tough. Here's Madison Tati. She just leveled up from that combat, so she has five skill points to spend. I've actually become a really big fan of piloting for this faction specifically because they have access to some really powerful vehicles like the Paladin Protector. The Paladin Protector is kind of insane. It can heal units in an AoE, provide them defensive bonuses, has a ton of health and a really, really powerful repeating melee attack. I don't know, that just seems like more fun to me. So let's get her into a Paladin Protector battle suit. What I really like though is it actually uh, makes a change to how they look on the battlefield. You can see them walking around in the big mech suit now. I'm going to mod every single one of my units with the Oath of Loyalty so I can just have a giant death ball sort of marching around the battlefield. Ooh, Mirror Seas. Unfortunately, I don't have any water tiles to kind of show this off, but basically water units will move faster. You'll gain extra resources from water cities and so on and so forth. I really like the idea of getting this insectoid food sector in my empire. This is really cool because I believe this gives you a building that can buff your unit's health by five. I'll just negotiate for these guys to get out of my way because I want to try to be peaceful and friendly and only fight when it really matters. Now this bronze monument belongs to me and I'll annex it over to my capital. Let's take on these units for the spacer quest. Uh, this one looks pretty easy too, but I would really like to show off just how tough my units are with these mods. The enemies get to go first and it looks like they're just going to advance right up to my face. The thing I love the most about these Paladin Protectors is that they're so huge, smaller units can use them as cover. If you can see that little cover symbol there. And it's actually the same for my Paladin Lightbringer. Let's just position ourselves in a defensive sort of posture. Ideally with as many of my units touching each other as possible to maximize the benefits from Oath of Loyalty. Like if you look at this guy in the middle, he's surrounded by four other units providing him with plus one armor. So his armor is seven right now. That means you have to do at least eight damage to him to just even begin to do damage. And then you add into the fact that they've got the precognition buff as well, which negates one direct damage attack. I basically have a giant shield wall advancing forward, aiming to take on this mass of like <laughs> alien wildlife. And then I can stack even harder onto that by using defense mode protector shields, which gives all units within range extra shield. Shield is like armor that basically applies only to ranged attacks. And uh, did I mention that I had two of these guys to double up? <laughs> <laughs> and my Paladin Lightbringer has a really cool ability too. It gives morale to all units within two hexes for two turns. Uh, morale is basically what decides whether or not you're going to critically hit someone. So this is like amazing. Don't like, just don't stare directly at the giant shield ball of death, okay? Let's see how the AI takes to my giant shield ball. All right, they missed. They grazed thanks to precognition. That's amazing. They jumped at me, did no damage because of precognition. <laughs> oh, I love this. Oh, this, this feels so good to just be a giant wall of metal and meat and just hatred marching forward. Speaking of which, let's step forward with my hero and see if we can't take out this guy with our Vault Saber. Jab. Oh, that's one hit, two hits, and the third hit. They're dead already. Let's use the Paladin Lightbringer to fire off a burning banner that should start setting people on fire. Fire upon the enemy, and we miss. 
Doesn't matter though, because we're practically invincible. Fire again. This time we nailed them. Hopefully we can take them out with our flyer, because I really don't want to have to deal with their AoE attack. Well, it looks like we missed two of our three attacks. That's okay though, because we're still really, really hard to do damage to. Oh, looks like one of the enemy units got soul burnt and is on fire now. Oh, he leapt at me. He actually managed to do damage. Amazing. But he triggered an overwatch from my other unit and from that unit. This guy, this is like, <laughs> it's like jumping onto a field of spikes and instantly getting murdered. I think this guy is going to try to do an AoE attack on me here. Oh, he missed. <laughs> I think they know their AoE attack just really wouldn't do much. So they're trying to do direct damage. Oh, they missed again. Amazing. Okay, this faction, I, you know what? This is my favorite faction. I'm playing nobody else ever again. This should be a fairly simple cleanup. I'll use my uh, Paladin Protector here to take out these horrible insects. Enemy <laughs> they exploded to do damage, but it didn't do any damage because I still have precognition on this guy. Okay, this is genuinely just like this is my favorite kind of faction in any game when i was a kid i used to load up like total war battles where i would have like a very very small army but a giant castle against ten thousand, you know enemy forces and they would have reinforcements coming forever playing this faction feels like that i just become this giant uncrackable nut in the middle of the battlefield and everyone has to throw themselves at me let's grab ourselves another city now that we finished that battle it'll take three turns to recruit this colonizer and i think the beige expanse down here is as good a spot as any to settle on let's try to take care of these marauding uh fungoid units here or rather, they're called the Mycelians. These are kind of like uh, fungal infected robots, which is a really cool idea. I don't think I've seen it before. Anyway, we'll just auto combat this one and uh, get them out of the way. I've also got a little archaeological dig site here that I'm going to spend a bit of time excavating the sand at. Ooh, let's grab the nutrition center from the insectoid food center. That'll give me a buff of five health on all my non-mechanical units. I fear as most of my units are mechanical, so it's not a super useful building, but it'll make my basic infantry much better. Food development one finished. That's going to allow me to build some new buildings as well as upgrade my food sectors. Basers want me to kill a hopper hound nest. I've got 10 turns to complete this. and uh, It'll net me a decent amount of relations, influence and production and food. So I'm going to accept that quest. Erlene Westcott wants to join my empire. She is an Oathbound Xenoplague unit wearing the Paladin Warlord battle suit, which is a tier two vehicle. I am definitely going to take her onto my team. The Amazon are asking us to research wildlife studies and they'll give us a bit of experience and some renown. Speaking of renown, I have a ton to spend. Let's go ahead and unlock Laser Strike. And we may as well unlock Flash Payload as well. Um, otherwise, I'm not really sure what to do with this. I could just get like a whole unit full of Devar Prospectors and use them like a swarm unit to maybe explore and do damage to settlements gaining an advantage somehow it's very tempting my question is though do they actually cost me upkeep each one of these devour prospectors would cost me four gold per turn in upkeep i do like the idea of making a giant death ball of devour prospectors so i will eventually do it oh wow this is actually a really cool change they've made to the game the residential exploitation it gives you plus one annexable sector unlocked at 20 and 24 population colony can annex adjacent sectors even if they're further than two sectors away from the core and colony districts buildings can be upgraded than additional time that is so cool this was one of my biggest complaints about the city management is that there was no really way to build a taller city and they went and implemented a solution that's kind of how i feel like every time i play an update for this game I'm like wow oh, man there was like all these problems with the last build and then i play the new build and they've just introduced all the fixes like with new game mechanics let's take on this hopper hound nest for this quest oh we're going to be going up against the hopper hound eviscerator it's kind of a scary guy he's got 55 health and a ton of damage i'm gonna run all my units to the north so i can get them all grouped up to into a giant death ball. Let's just hope the enemy can't catch my stragglers with their leaping jumps. Oh, they're doing invigorating stridulations. I have no idea what that is. If somebody told me they were going to invigorate my stridulations, I would ask them to leave my house. All right, we're forming the death ball. Just trying to make sure I surround my protectors with, uh, with units. So when they use their AOE buff, it hits as many units as I can. Look at how tasty this death ball of shields and armor is. All right, here they come. How how bad is this going to be? Oh, they leapt at my little my little dude. You can't leap at my flying units. That's not right. Precognition escapes me from damage. All right, let's see how this one goes. And precognition. <laughs> he missed, and I got precognition. All right, let's hit this guy with a giant flaming great bow bolt. 
That was a pretty tasty hit. Took 20 damage off him. Now, I wonder, should I move this guy forward to stab him with my little jolty stick? Now, let's soften him up first with one of my flying guys. And then we'll run forward and give him the jab. Phew. Let's start opening fire on these guys. Now, they are in cover, so they'll be pretty hard to hit. But if we can get a little bit of free damage, we'll always win out in an attrition war. Oh, man. Look at that. All right. Just need one more hit, but I don't have line of sight on these guys. Or these guys. I don't really want to move anyone, because I'm feeling very secure in my giant ball of death. 50-50 shot on the big boss. Hit him for 8. Alright, here he comes. What's he going to do? Oh, he crit me. Damn, he did 18 damage. But we get the overwatch. Oh no, don't nibble me. No, he's isolated my poor little guy. We have to try and save him next turn. Owie, I think they're going after this flying guy because he's already hurt. I think I might even just retreat him out of the battle. Honestly, your time is up. Get the hell out of here. Alright, let's eviscerate this guy with our vault saber. Uh, Overwatch triggered. The only good bug is a dead bug. Let's get rid of these bugs once and for all. Now, they did explode and do a bit of damage to my guy, but... It's not the end of the world. I'm going to move in with Erlene Westcott in the Eviscerator and just watch her mill these guys out of it. Ah, uh, one attack, two attack. Beautiful. Speaking of dead bugs, let's get rid of these guys as well. I'm really not sure if I'm supposed to feel invincible, but goddamn do I feel invincible. It doesn't matter if most of my attacks miss, because they can't really stop me. Oh, actually, let's use a laser strike to nearly finish this guy off. Boom. Oh god, he's nibbling on my back. <laughs> Leave me alone. Alright, let's give him the old shot in the back from the warden. Kaboom. I think I had a lot of overwhelming firepower for that fight, but I think it was fun to just show off how big your death ball can be. Wow, I got my very own Hopperhound Manhunter here from winning that battle. I guess I found like an egg or something and just hatched this thing. The cool thing about this guy is if I get him enough experience, he'll actually evolve into a higher tier life form. Uh, then if I remember correctly, I think that can also get to max experience and evolve into an even higher tier life form. Oh, apparently the uh, Paragon declared war on me because I refused one of their demands. They wanted some of my precious Cosmite, but I wasn't willing to give it up. So I guess I'm at war with them. I usually try to play the peaceful kind of guy, so I've never actually been at war with a neutral faction i'm not really sure what this means for me uh oh i didn't notice this guy spawning here now garrett a grail is under threat yep it's kind of what i was expecting i'll need to spend money to immediately finish this defensive infrastructure that'll give me a little bit more colonial militia power but i think the better way to defend a city is to have a garrison inside it it's not strong enough to stop these guys from messing with me i can't afford budget cybernetic arnold so i'm gonna go ahead and reject him oh neat i found a corrupted battle suit that i'll be able to put on my uh, heroes random marauders keep trying to attack my capital but thankfully i have a big enough army to defend it in my militia although i can't help but feel like that should be experience going towards my units just grab my third sector fernwood in my capital this time in fernwood i'm going to build a residential exploitation to be able to build a taller city i did actually find a really cool piece of loot the tactical mechanical assistant which allows me to revive any cyborg or mechanical unit with 50 percent of its maximum health i'm not sure if my units will actually ever die but i'm pretty sure most of my late game units are mechanical so I'm going to go ahead and put that on my main hero. That's another aspect of the game that I'm a really big fan of. You can actually find like one-off stims and combat mods that you can equip to your heroes. Whereas the rest of your units, they have a much lower selection of what they can put on. I think it really helps heroes feel like a really sort of unique part of your army. Ooh, I just unlocked the Watcher. It's a tier 2 specialist unit for the Oathbound. I've decided to use the city of Axiod as a food distribution center. So I set their food sharing to half. That means if I want my capital to grow a little bit quicker, I can come in here and set it to take. There's no food in the global pool right now, so there's nothing for them to take for themselves, but they will. You can see now a couple turns later, we're taking 25 food from that other city. That's great because it means we're going to grow even faster in my capital city and be able to grab even more districts. That's amazingly convenient. I was heading over here to clear out this hopperhound nest for a mission I got from the uh, spacers. And then they gave me an even easier mission to take out these Paragon units who I'm already at war with, so that works for me. Looks like we failed the auto-resolve, so I'm going to fight this one manually. 
We have to watch out for the fact that these guys do arc damage and we're kind of weak to that. They've got a heavy soldier that does a lot of damage from long range. He's going to be a bit of a problem for us. There's also these melee units they like to run into the middle of your formations. I'm really worried about these fanatics though because they have the ability overdrive that allows them to arc their attacks all over your army which could be a big problem for me. I mean I suppose as long as I have my giant death ball of oath of loyalty I should be fine. Let's go ahead and use our defensive shielding here to uh, prevent them from being able to do too much to us this turn. All right, our giant shield ball is activated. Let's see what they can do. Uh, they did nothing. <laughs> they decided that it would be better not to attack. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and stay out of this guy's range. I'll move forward cautiously to see if we can take on this these guys over here. Let's do some shielding and uh, use our range units to try to take this guy out. I'm actually tempted to drop a burning flag, but we'll just take a regular shot. 70% chance to hit for 20 damage is pretty good at this stage. Oh, we grazed them. I'm going to use one of my operations to try and soften this guy up. I really don't want him causing me problems. 38% chance to hit with my regular attacks. Looks like we nailed him. My piddle, poor little oathbound squire got left behind. <laughs> I got to bring him up. All right, here they go. Now that I've attacked them, they should be more willing to actually move in and engage me rather than sit back and wait for me to advance. Ooh. All right, their attacks are arcing. Thankfully, we have a ton of armor, so it's not doing much damage. And our precognition is kicking in to reduce that damage as well. Now this is the scary bit in case he uses his charge, but we managed to trigger an overwatch and completely obliterate them. And by completely obliterate them, I mean leave them on about half health, but we should be able to kill them now. One and two. Enemy. I'm going to continue with my shield ball here because not all my units can move and use their abilities this turn. And that'll hopefully buy me time to actually approach this heavy soldier before he does significant damage to my army. All right, here comes his attack. Ooh, he used an AOE missile. Did a ton of damage, but we're holding strong. Oof. All right, a couple of our units are starting to get hurt. I need to drop a healing banner here. I hope these guys don't manage to get a charge attack off. That would be really annoying. Oh, they did a lot of damage. And we, we counterattacked them into oblivion. Feels good, man. Oh, I see. All of my units are stunned. Well, I'll go ahead and launch a banner of healing to uh, get back a little bit of health here. That'll heal everyone up a bit and it'll continue healing people for a while. And then I'll go ahead and take this guy out with my uh, commander. That did trigger the overwatch and I took 18 damage, Jesus. Let's see if I can distract this guy with my uh, flying unit. Just fire a small weak attack at him and maybe he'll target him. I don't think I can afford to take another AOE arc attack off him. The stuns are just becoming horrific. All right, please don't overdrive him. Please don't. Oh, no, he teleported forward. Amazing. And he just regular attacked us. Okay, that's perfect. Honestly, you know what? I don't mind if my commander loses his vehicle. At the very least, he won't actually die. No, it looks like we actually survived. All right, brilliant. I'm going to give Providence here to my Warden. And I'll run forward with my Aspirin to take out their uh, guy here. That'll take care of those guys. Now I need to get a nice shot on this dude. All right, here we go. Critical hit. All right, 20 damage and staggered him. I'm good with that. Let's launch off a heal with our main hero here as well. I'll try and just bring our health up a bit. And I'll even do it with this guy too. Just to get the health up just that extra little bit. Scoot your flying unit forward and try to just get some chip damage. Yeah, pretty good chip damage. The only danger is here um, if he manages to like crit or do something crazy. But I think we're pretty lucky. Oh, didn't do anything too significant. I should be able to take him out with my uh, Lightbringer here. All right, Lightbringer, finish the fight. Thank you. The That's an important part of playing the game. Uh, when you auto-resolve, just kind of keep an eye out for what the results are because I got a much better outcome than the auto-resolve did. I'm also quite happy that these guys are starting to reach level 3. They get 6 health per level, as well as 5% accuracy every 2 levels, and at the final rank they get a special ability called Firm. I don't know why it's so satisfying to level units up, but we actually picked up another unique defense mod here, uh, Regenerative Dermal Patches, which allows you to regenerate 8 health per turn for 4 turns and gives you plus 1 armor. That seems like it would be really fun to put on a hero that likes to get in the thick of it. Speaking of heroes that like to get in the thick of it, Erlene Westcott is like the perfect example of that. She's in a melee battle suit, so I think this regenerative stuff would be super brilliant for her. 
another quest completed and I got another copy of regenerative uh, dermal patches. This time I'll sell this because I'm a little bit light on money anyway. I think it's about time we bought our Devar Prospector Death Ball, so let's grab another four of these bad boys and then link them up with the other ones. This is the Oathbound Watcher. It's our tier two skirmisher unit. It has the Entropic Lash ability, which is a seven range, nine damage ability that can splash up to two targets within two hexes. It also has the Gift of Providence, which allows it to give the Providence buff to anyone nearby, uh, which turns all of their attacks into critical hits. That sounds insane. Lash of Adversity, uh, target enemy units gains adversity for making all of its attacks fumble. Oh, wow. And that can jump. This looks like a really cool utility unit. And plus, can we talk about how cool the artwork is? Uh-oh, the Shakarn have declared war on us. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the Shakarn, <laughs> uh, mainly because they declared war on me. They're the yellow guys to our south, and it's a little bit scary because they have a ton of armies in the nearby area. Let's grab ourselves a melter from the spacers. Tier three units are gonna help us out in this war. Oh, lovely. Winning this battle brought my guys to max level. The thing I love about these Paladin Aspirants is when they hit max level, they can actually be upgraded. I can use the Strategic Operation Elevate a Warden to turn one of those guys into a Warden. All right, here's my Devar Prospector Death Ball. I'll give them Oath of Loyalty so they have really strong armor. Flash Payload to be able to blind enemy units and take even less damage. And then later on, when I unlock another mod that maybe heals, I'll give that to them. But for now, this is going to be my giant Devour Death Ball. It's kind of a meme build rather than something that you should actually do in your games, but I don't think I'm going to let that stop me. We got the Orbital Weapons Cache World Event, which basically every two turns a random unit's going to be hit from uh, exploding debris because there's like giant weapon cache loot boxes falling from the sky. I evolved one of my Wardens up to a Paladin Aspirant now. This is the Incorruptible right here. He gets to keep his old mod, I believe. And I think he also gets a special ability called the Aura of Guidance or something. Ah, oh, here it is, Oathbound Veteran. So he has plus one resistance to all status effects. I don't know, I just find it really satisfying when you take a tier one unit and you like upgrade it up to tier two and tier three and stuff like that. So this faction really appeals to me for that reason. Let's see how the Devar Prospector meme team does against some of these uh, aliens. All right, we all start with precognition, preventing some damage. Let's move forward and make sure that we preserve formation. I don't want anyone taking too much damage here. We're in our little death ball. Let's see where the AI comes from. Oh, Jesus. Precognition saved me from the falling weapons cache, actually. He's gonna leap at me. Oh, took no damage from him that time. He's gonna spit at me, which I don't like at all. But thankfully, I do have precognition to prevent the damage. Uh, I think this is gonna be a leap or something. Oh, no, I got a way scot free. 80% chance to blind and stagger. All right, let's see if we can get this 64% chance hit. All right, he's staggered, which means his melee overwatch is canceled. So now I can safely stagger and blind these guys over here. Nice, nailed them. Also gonna stagger and blind these guys over here to the north. And if I could just get a hit on these guys, I'd be super happy. <laughs> <laughs> Their entire army is staggered and blinded. They can't do anything to me. Let's keep hitting them. Even more stagger. Beautiful. All right, we've got a 64% chance. Hopefully I don't hit my own dude. <laughs> the double stagger on these guys. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, you know what's hilarious? My arc discharge works here and it actually killed that guy over there. And now he's completely staggered. He may as well be stunned. Beautiful. I, lo I love my Prospector Death Ball. It's probably not the most powerful thing in the world, but you know what? It's fun. They, they take very little damage. They take forever to kill. They blind you. They stagger you. There's nothing you can do to them because they can also activate a thing called um, Eat Dust, which basically allows them to move and then move again, which means if I start losing a fight, I can always just escape. Like I can just take this unit and run away. Probably wouldn't work too well against players in multiplayer, but it seems to work pretty okay against the AI. All right, 45% chance on this guy isn't good enough, so I'll move up for a 90. Bam, and he's dead. And we'll take out this guy from behind as well. And then that leaves these green hopper hounds wide open for me to kill. 55% still isn't amazing, but they were in defensive mode, and now I staggered them out of it. There you go. We managed to kill all of the alien life forms without taking a single point of damage. Reminds me of the four Fester hit squad from StarCraft 2, except it's the six Prospector hit squad. 
These aren't even real combat units. They're scout units. Like, come on. But you give them these two upgrades and they become really hard to deal with. My six prospector hit squad actually managed to lose a fight. I'm going to retry that and see if I can make it come out in my favor. Only a 17% chance to hit on these guys, but I only need to land one shot to do a lot of damage. Uh oh, it's not looking good. I've already missed twice. Oh, there we go. We got the hit. Now he's blind. One more hit for daddy? Nope, but we did kill his cover. Right at the end, we kill his cover. Come on. Oh, hyper aggression. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> oh, that's really not good. I don't think these guys can be staggered either. Uh, I think I might actually lose this fight. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus Christ. They do so much damage. Oh god, he's flanked them. He's dead in one turn. Alright, let's take some shots. 60%. Kaboom. And he's staggered. One more shot. Nice. Stagger. I need to get the stagger on these baby pigs as well. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Give me a stagger. Alright, we got the stagger. Happy days. Let's get another stagger on these baby pigs to buy some more time. All right, cool. If we could take out both these guys, I think we're starting off on the right foot. We did lose one of our guys, which doesn't feel good, but we did completely stun him. Oh, here comes in the other destroyer. Ooh, thank God for precognition. All right, piggy coming in. Oh, he crit me. What is this crit? Get. Oh my God. That's a crit. Holy Jesus. I'm down to five prospectors in my hit squad here. Hang on. All right. I think we can get rid of these piggies safely. Uh, so we'll take those guys out. Oh, you're kidding me? They survived on one health? That's unacceptable. It's inconceivable. All right. We have to kill the pigs. They're just too scary. I gotta stun this destroyer, like, so bad. Okay, the stagger worked, so his overwatch is gone. Can I get another stagger? It's a 48%. Oh, we hit the... We hit the little pustules. All right, let's fall back here. We got our loyalty. This guy is real scary. Let's try to stagger him again. I'm out of money, so I can't use any more operations, which <laughs> really sucks. All right, here's their turn. Ugh, precog wiped out by the falling debris. Not a fan of that. All right, what are they doing? Looks like they're going to spit at me. Not a fan. Oh, that does so much damage. Oh my... Okay, they missed. Thank God. Ugh. Okay, that's painful. That's real painful. I need to stagger those pustules. All right, let's get the stagger on him. I missed. That's really bad. Can I get the stagger on you? All right, we got the stagger on you. I need to stagger these pustules so I can retreat. Fall back and take a 48% chance. All right, good. I need to get rid of someone this turn. And I think it's the pustules. 60% chance. Got him. All right, I have a pretty low chance of surviving here. A couple of my guys are in scary levels of health. I don't know. I think we can do it. I think we can do it. I might lose another guy, though. Oh, he snuck past me. What the hell? Okay, we're, we lost two of it. Well, we're down to the four prospector hit squad now, okay? We're going to be fine. Oh, okay. He grazed me. All right, 85% chance of a kill. All right, nice. Let's get a stagger on him. All right, he resisted our blind. Step back with you, 60%. Alright, lovely blind. Step forward with you. We got a 60% for another stagger. Ah, oh, we didn't stagger him. Ah, oh, he can run around and get to this guy. Oh no, he might be able to kill another one. Oh! Okay, precognition, saving the bacon. Oh, he missed, yes! This is, this is by far the dumbest thing I've ever done in this game. Don't, don't make a six prospector hit squad, okay? It's not good. It's really not good. 
At the very least, the surviving prospectors did level up, which means if we go into battle again, they will have a little bit more health. I think they might need another defensive mod to really be able to stay alive. Anyway, I think that's a pretty good overview of the new features in uh, Star Kings, at least the ones you're gonna encounter in the early game. I'm really enjoying this update. In fact, pretty much every update to this game, I've been kind of blown away by. So I hope you guys remember to check this game out. There is a link in the description of the video. If there's enough interest in the video, I'll continue this series. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.